Hello friends, welcome to PySpark video tutorials and today's session I am going to give you few important interview questions related to partitions and while reading files how we will read multiple files and how we will read files in subfolders okay that is recursively. So when it comes to partitions so while reading data from file maybe table uh, by default spark will decide based on batch size based on batch size it will create number of partitions so how you will identify that batch size where it will be available and how to control that batch size for example by default when you are reading data from file of uh, the default max partition bytes parameter will be there so that default size is 128 mb so based on that it will create number of partitions so you can verify that in spark config parameter called spark.sql.files. Dot max partition bytes so this parameter will have a default sizes in bytes so this bytes if we convert into mb so so it will be in byte size kilobytes then megabytes if you verify this the size will be in 128 mb so if you want to control this no i don't want 128 MB for partition I want to decrease or maybe increase based on your input data size so you can set this configuration this is getting just will get the information there is an option called set spark.conf.set which you can set how much size you are looking for okay so I want to update maybe 300 MB size so I can change this partition size while reading data it will create number of partitions based on this size that is max partition bytes max partition bytes while reading files from maybe HDFS or S3 or DBFS locations okay so if you are reading huge data so based on that if if you are reading more than 300 MB file it will create based on that then while creating RDD default it will create 8 partitions for example RDD we'll use a spark uh, context parallelize method parallelize method then python collection so when you are creating rtd you can verify one function called get number of partitions so this function will give you how many partitions are created see eight partitions it is creating but this is data is sample data but still it is going eight so when when you are creating rdd using parallelize method so parallelize method will consider default parallelizer so there is a parameter called in spark context default parallelism so this default parallelism will be 8 so for that reason it is creating 8 partitions same thing while reading data from file and creating rdd so that time it will create a two partitions let's verify that so i have some file here or we will consider same file rdd spark on text dot text file so now when i am creating a text file it's a simple file file store tables emp dot csv so i am trying to read this small file very small file less than 1 mb only less than 1 mb only but if you verify this rdd get number of partitions So while creating RDD reading from file, you see this, it is created two partitions. So by default, so default it will create two partitions when you use a text file. When you use a parallelize method, it will use eight partitions. That is default minimum partitions. Default minimum partitions, there is a parameter called default minimum partitions. So that will apply here. Okay. So if then when it comes to data frame when you are reading data from file so the default size here you can see the max partition size based on that it will create number of partitions so if i create rdd spark d dot csv so that csv file and data frame so data frame does not have this function we need to convert into rdd so the data frame dot rdd dot get number of partitions look at this it is created only one partition why because 
spark session is different spark context is different so while using a spark context the rdd will have a default palladium so spark context will have a default palladium and minimum number of partitions so based on that it will create but data frame it will use spark session so the spark session will have a configuration you see this that is max partition width so based on that it will create number of partitions then when when it comes to shuffling so data shuffling whenever you are doing a, a wide transformations like group by so this type of costly operations whenever you are doing the default it will goes to default shuffle partitions okay so you can verify that how many are there default shuffle part default will be 200 then you can control this you can control this means you can set this parameter spark session level so that can be controlled so i can change or i can increase or decrease so i can decrease to 10. so if i verify it should be 10 now so that is the default shuffle partitions will be 200 you can control that using this configuration parameter called spark dot sql dot shuffle partitions which you can increase or decrease based on your requirement then when it comes to ddl so if you want to take your entire ddl at spark sql it in databricks or maybe any other on-premises environment hive environment we can use a simple function so that function will refer catalog objects spark catalog will have a databases and where you can find the spark list of tables and the tables will have again uh, columns so if you are looking for only a particular database okay then you can give input as a particular database name or it will fetch the all the database into this variable in a collection so that will it will use a for loop then dynamically it will create one file for each database so that database name because you see this that list will have input is db name then if first it will get the table names you see list table name then we will use the spark.sql we will write show create table syntax so show create table and table name it will give you complete ddl so that we can write into particular location so just we need to give that path i'm using a python so python uh, where open so python file input output operations can write outside dbfs so outside dbfs means so that function you can create and you can call that function passing input path then it will create a complete ddls complete ddls into in this location so just i'm giving a ddls as a path so so that directory it's not available directly we will we can create directory it's not an issue percentage fs mkdirs file colon so i'm so in core python can access outside dbfs outside distributed file system colon temp ddls so just i'm creating one directory so that directory i'm going to use here okay so file colon means where databricks cluster will have a one ubuntu os so that os level it will create now you can list this directory after completion of this function calling then you can find all the ddls in this directory all the ddls in a separate one database one database sql file which you can find this a simple way which you can take entire backup all the databases if you are looking for particular database just pass one variable input then create an argument in the function now we are using a path right then you can pass another argument a database name you can pass that okay so now it is taking all the database tables backup so that will be available with a single sql for each database it will have a one single sql file for that so if you're looking for particular table and column name data type this is another function which i created with a combination of first we'll get the database name then each database will have a tables so that table again will have a list of columns so there we are using a multiple for loops you can verify this 
then I'm going to append into Python list. So that list will get appended all this database name, table name, and each table name will have a column name. So that it will return that. So or you can write into another file where we, we are writing all this DDL, right? Same thing, just only column names, database name, table name, and column names. Okay. This is another approach. So where we can get metadata information from Spark catalog. So it's an internal meta store. So default it uses Hive. Uh, even if you create Delta table also, the default tables will be available in this Spark catalog meta store. It's taking more time. Okay. So meanwhile, we will cover a few other important options. So while reading files, while reading files, and if particular folder, particular folder in your project, particular folder is having more than one file and more than one name, different names and different extensions, file name with a different extension. If you want to filter only particular file starting with name or maybe ending with a particular file name, so we can go with, there is a one option called path global filter. So path global filter in one folder, if you have a multiple files with a multiple file extensions, you can apply this searching pattern. Searching pattern you can apply and you can get that. That is path global filter. So I'm looking for sample dot some any JSON file which is starting with sample dot star. Okay. So I'm going to add one column using with column input file name just to verify that how many files it is reading. So those file names you will get to know in this data frame. So I'm selecting only file name column from that. So maybe the previous command is still running. Now it will be done. Yeah. Now you can verify. See in this directory, it is created many files. Okay. So this is one of the database. So that database is having tables and information if you want to know you can read that head and particular file so you can read that this file is having complete information always remember we need to use a file colon not a dbfs okay so you can see this is the ddl which is all the delta tables you can see delta tables ddl it is created in that particular database so like this we can use this then so when it comes to so i'm looking i just i given sample star json so in this data frame he's having these files okay so if you remove sample then whatever json names whatever name but ending with that json it will read all the files and it will create a data frame these many files are available these many files are available so like that we can go with global filter but if you have a subfolders like partition folders or maybe year folder month folder then there is another option there is another option which we can use that is a recursive file lookup so recursive file lookup is another option where if you have a subfolder one folder within that another folder like partition based if you're looking uh, those data to read and write into data frame you can use this option okay let's verify this so just i'm giving emp then under emp there is a few files and under emp there is another folder that folder also is having few more files so whenever you use a recursive file lookup we should get all the files even i'm writing this into new column using a input file name so that function will give you file names just i'm fetching that only file name option here you can see these all are in the main directory under that there is another directory new amp which i created for testing purpose now you can see if i remove this option or you can made it false default it will be in false okay so if i remove and run i should not get these files okay why because recursive file lookup primary option is looking at files which is under partition based files like one folder within that another folder let's run it again now see those under that there is another directory those files are not coming 
okay so under this directory I will show you that there is another directory which is having more files see there is another directory so this directory is having few more files so whenever you use a recursive file lookup it can verify subfolders that is partition based maybe year month so based on your requirement you can use this that is a recursive file lookup a recursive file lookup so you may expect related to partitions related to uh, file searching pattern related to a recursive file or creating a DDL or searching for a particular table name column name and databases available list of available databases so you, you can utilize this and these are our few questions which we discussed now and another video we will discuss few more questions related to PySpark. Thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe my channel and thumbs up. Thank you very much.